Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Maddie and I am a second year PhD student in chemical engineering at Montana State University. And I got an honorable mention in the NSF GRFP for the 2021, 2022 application cycle. Um, so today I wanted to talk about my personal statement. I wanted to kind of read it to you. Tips that I have for writing a personal statement specifically for the NSF GRFP as well as personal statement tips in general. And then I'm also gonna go through the reviewer comments that I got in regards to my personal statement. I think this is gonna be a little bit of a mini series regarding the NSF GRFP. And this is going to be part one, mostly because this is the part that I did the best on and therefore I think it's the part that I can give the most advice for. So I'm gonna read through it and I'm also gonna kind of, I'm gonna to try to figure out how I can put it up on the screen somewhere so that you can also read along in case you just don't wanna really hear my voice. Um, so let's do that. In all aspects of my life, I love incorporating problem solving. I recently developed a, a passion for sewing and wearing handmade one-of-a-kind clothing, a generally relaxing and occasionally incredibly frustrating hobby requiring immense patience and creativity. Many parts of sewing must be done in specific ways, such as throwing machine, but other parts are entirely up to interpretation and freestyling. If something goes wrong, there is always a protocol to fall back on. Rip the seams, read the manual, rethread the machine, and start again. I find myself taking a similar approach in the lab when my experiments are failing, microbes are not growing, or data do not make sense. I have my training, my mentor, and my lab notebook, lab notebook to go to for help. Much like sewing, my research has my own touch, and I'm not afraid to think outside of the pattern or protocol. Immense levels of creativity are necessary for successful cutting-edge experiments. The science, engineering, and problem-solving focus of my personality is not too far from the creative sewing side. The thrill of completing a difficult, one-of-a-kind garment is parallel to obtaining a hard one novel result in the laboratory. This summer, I mentored two undergraduate students from Georgia through our NSF Research Experience for Undergrads, RU program. My students, Gabby Lopez and Oscar Venegas, had no background in a lab and had never even taken a microbiology class. While working, I found myself getting into a fl my flow state while at times they struggled to even thread the machine. Despite my occasional frustration with the seemingly slow late rate of learning and progress, I reminded myself that at one point I also did not know how to use a pipette or count plates. Gabby and Oscar had to rip the seams, read the manual, and rethread the machine many times over the course of the summer while completing their experiments. I found myself doing the same regarding my mentoring approach. By the end of only 10 weeks, they had an impressive data set and an understanding of how to approach scientific research. Those 10 weeks gave me a more open mind concerning my communication and mentoring style. Gabby and Oscar taught me to be more creative with my training approach and helped me brush up on my conversational Spanish, though none of us knew if there was a Spanish word for autoclave relevant background. My first research position was during my senior year of high school. My time in Dr. Brian Truen's lab at Colorado School of Mines set the stage for my love of research and desire to work in a lab. In that lab, I focused on the synthesis of mesopora silica nanoparticles for drug delivery. That research was vastly different than any research I've done since, and while the topic itself was not directly transferable, the skills I acquired were. In his lab, I learned the basics of research, namely the, importance, the important balance of creativity, trial and error, and the massive quantity of dishes that must be done to keep the lab running. I also worked with a PhD student on her research, which resulted in getting published as a contributing author. I chose to attend Montana State University, MSU, for my graduate, undergraduate studies because it is home to the Center for Biofilm Engineering, CBE, and NSF ERC. I integrated into CBE research as soon as I could, and in my sophomore year, I secured a position with the CBE Standard Biofilm Methods Lab, SBML. At this time, I had not even taken a microbiology course, but I assured my mentors that I would try as hard as I could, was excited about the research, and would work well with the team. My time in the SBML was instrumental for building my experiment planning, research, and teamwork skills. The lab work allowed me to grow through my successes and failures in a supportive and encouraging environment. I went through an official training program where I learned proper microbiological technique, how to keep a quality lab notebook, and how to maintain a scientific mindset. I use this training every single day, and I do my best to pass the ideas and skills to my mentees and my lab mates. My projects in the SVML included a wide range of biofilm-related topics. I first worked with a bio multi-species biofilm that consisted of four bacteria species common in medical settings. That project is where my interest in multi-species interactions began. Other projects included chemical testing for CBE member companies, developing a new biofilm reactor, and working to create a new method for evaluating biofilm growth in urinary catheters. In the summer of 2019, I switched labs to pursue research regarding biofilms in space and started doing research with my current advisor, insert advisor name here, <laughs> 
The position was initially designed for a master's student, and despite being an undergraduate, I had the skill set to succeed in the position. In his lab, I began my collaboration with the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, working to evaluate, or JPL, working to evaluate material coatings and their potential to mitigate biofilm growth on the International Space Station, the ISS, water systems. I have been conducting this research for two years, and it continually excites me. Dr. Payton, insert advisor's name here, and my collaborators from the JPL have helped guide the project, but I have been responsible for much of the experimental design. I initially found their, this responsibility intimidating and still face occasional challenges. Whenever I meet a roadblock for the project, I take a step back, look at it like another difficult sewing project. I rip the seams, I rethread the machine, and I come to a creative solution. While in, insert advisor name here, <laughs> I have learned how to use new equipment and techniques to bolster my research. I learned how to use epifluorescent, confocal, and scanning electron microscopes to add new quantitative and qualitative data to my experiments. I also wrote the Institutional Biosafety Committee, IBC protocol, that approved the use of microorganisms needed for my pro project, something I was not re responsible for doing in the SBML. This past year, in insert advisor names here, <laughs> included uh, lab included a return to studying multi-species biofilms. This time, however, I grew multi-domain biofilms consisting of a bacterial and fungal species. These experiments have required more ripping of seams and machine rethreading than I would like to admit. However, my interest in mixed species and multi-domain biofilms has been reinvigorated, and I look forward to conducting more challenging research with mixed domain biofilms of complex consortia. Broader impact. The science equivalent to proudly wearing my handmade garments is sharing my research findings with others. I love chatting with colleagues about my projects and presenting results at conferences. However, I found even greater joy and fulfillment discussing research with people who are not exposed to scientific discussions that take place in academia. During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, I personally reached out to numerous middle, school, middle and high school teachers emphasizing rural communities, asking to virtually take over their classes for the day to teach students about biofilms. Over the course of the 2020-2021 school year, I gave over 25 virtual presentations in rural Montana and South Dakota schools, reaching more than 350 middle and high school students. This academic year, I have switched my outreach focus to the senior community. I reached out to all the local senior centers and senior living communities to give science chats and I've already completed several events. The senior population is historically overlooked when it comes to STEM outreach, and I intend to amend that in my community. In addition to my self-directed outreach, I have participated in several large events aimed at getting kids, especially young girls, interested and involved in science. I have volunteered multiple times for the Montana Science Olympiad, Expanding Your Horizons, an MSU event for middle school girls to get hands-on science experiment. Though not a volunteering position, I was also a teaching assistant last fall for the Freshman Biological and Chemical Engineering Lab. As a TA, I honed my communication skills to give comprehensible instructions to a group of students with no prior laboratory experience. My experiences as a volunteer, TA, and mentor have all deepened my passion to get more people, especially younger generations, rural communities, and seniors interested in science. They have all required an ability to communicate with those who are not experts in my field and revealed the vast importance of science communication, which I had previously not considered. My two greatest passions are my scientific research and sharing that research with other people. There's an issue I've noticed in the scientific and academic communities concerning a lack of effective communication with the quote, outside world. Scientists and doctors are experts in their field with immense knowledge of their topic, often without sufficient ability to convey their knowledge to those without almost identical backgrounds. Can a researcher truly be considered an expert in their field if they cannot communicate with the person paying the taxes that ultimately fund that researcher's lab? If the COVID-19 pandemic has taught us anything, it's the need for effective, clear, and understandable communication from the scientific community to the general public. This will increase overall trust in science and may also increase research funding and general interest in science. As a PhD student, I have taken the initiative to bring awareness to the world of biofilms and biofilms in space. Doing outreach in my community and mentoring undergraduate students will always be a priority of mine. Receiving a GRFP would allow me to dedicate more of my time to do more outreach and organize a club on campus designed to connect grad students with rural teachers and senior communities. Intellectual merit. While an undergraduate student at MSU, I received two merit-based departmental scholarships. This year, I received another departmental scholarship. During my undergraduate studies, I was named to the president's or our dean's honor roll every semester. In 2020, I graduated magna cum laude from the Honors College with a Bachelor of Science in Biological Engineering with two minors in Biomedical Engineering and Hispanic Studies. I spent over a year and a half in the SBML. In that time, I was co-author of a textbook chapter and a scientific journal article. I helped design a novel biofilm reactor for which I am listed as a co-inventor. I presented posters at three conferences, helped train multiple new undergraduate interns, and managed a six-week project for the U.S. Army. Most importantly, my time in that lab continued to foster my love of science, my collaboration skills, and confidence in my research abilities. 
and insert advisor name here, <laughs> lab. I have given oral presentations at the Montana Biofilm Meeting twice, the ISS Research and Development Conference once, and I have a poster presentation at the American Society for Gravitational and Space Research, Research scheduled for November. One of my proudest accomplishments in insert advisor's name here, lab, was receiving a one semester fellowship from the Montana Space Grant Consortium for this fall semester. The research focuses on the survival of salt-loving microorganisms known as halophiles in Martian-like conditions. I'm incredibly proud to have received this fellowship, but it will only last for the fall of 2021 semester, and thus I am eagerly applying for more funding. These accomplishments represent my interest in science, dedication to my research, and my passion for academia. I decided to pursue a PhD to further entrench myself in the scientific and academic community. One year into my program, I am confident that I, exactly, that I am exactly where I want to be in my lifelong pursuit for intellectual and personal growth. Receiving a GRFP would put me into a category of academic elites with devotion to the art of scientific research. I would welcome this distinction with humility and excitement. Since my first position in 2015, I have dedicated my life to research. Earning a GRFP would be a crowning achievement that I would use to propel myself and my research forward for years. Future goals. A major goal of mine is to get more involved in the field of science communication. I would love to continue my normal outreach and look into opportunities in podcasting, writing, and creating videos. As scientists, we are incredibly efficient at communicating with other scientists, often with extensive jargon and confidence, which can be interpreted as an unintentional air of superiority. Making science accessible to those without STEM backgrounds or degrees is one of my passions. Increased accessibility will not only increase public knowledge of science, but will also inspire a wider, knowledge, a wider audience to pursue STEM fields or to stay scientifically informed. Being awarded a GRFP would show that I have effectively commuted my research topic to scientists who are not fully immersed in the world of biofilms. While I've enjoyed discussing my own research, it is a goal of mine this year to get a club started on campus where other students can do the same. Many of the teachers and seniors I presented to showed interest in making the science chat slash virtual presentations part of a regularly occurring series. I have contacted my fellow, fellow graduate students to gauge their interest in similar outreach and plan to facilitate the connections between, my, between students and rural teachers slash senior communities for these activities. Additionally, with my PhD, I would like to pursue an academic postdoc position to continue research in the realm of biofilms, emphasizing biofilms in space. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, my internships at the JPL were canceled. It is my hope, as well as my collaborators, that I will get to complete an in-person internship at the JPL during the summer of 2022. After completing that, I will be applying to internships at Kennedy Space Center, KSC, and Johnson Space Center, JSC, for future summers. It is a goal of mine to work with as many people at the intersection of engineering, space research, and microbiology as possible. Internships at the JPL, KSC, and JSC will, foster such, will help foster such relationships. The GRFB would help provide the financial freedom to pursue these incredible opportunities and set me apart from other applicants. So the first thing that I want to point out is that took me like maybe 14 or so minutes to read and I wrote those words. So I kind of knew what was coming up. Um, the applicant, the reviewers get about 10 to 15 minutes per application, which is that essay combined with the, um, what is that called? The research statement. So just like keep that in mind. Um, you'll notice if I figured out how to get it up here, you'll notice that I had some specific sentences bolded. That is because they aren't probably going to read every single word. And so those sentences were the ones that I really wanted to like, boom, impact. Please read this sentence if nothing else. Um, reading this back again, it is quite repetitive when I talk about like science outreach and all these kinds of things. Um, that being said, the GRFP really, really, really highly emphasizes your broader impact and your intellectual merit as well as your future goals. And that broader impact a lot of times is like, well, why should we fund you? And my answer to why should we they fund me was because if they fund me, I'm gonna tell a bunch of people about all this really cool research that I'm doing and I'm gonna get more people involved in STEM. So one of the things that they really highly want from people is a really well-rounded and impressive volunteer and outreach background. Um, this is something that is fairly well known in the GRFP world. Um, when it comes to writing a personal statement, I do try to make it fairly personal. So that's why I included the stuff about sewing. And then I can also kind of pull that metaphor throughout the, the statement a little bit more, um, which makes it a little bit more memorable as well. We're all scientists applying for these proposals. The fact that I do science is not unique when I'm applying to these proposals, but the fact that I sew is something that they might remember and might be unique. It might be what's like when they're at the table discussing what applicant what applicants should be selected. They might be like that one who sews. 
They're not going to be like that one who does science because we all do science. You know what I'm saying? So try to figure out what makes you unique. It doesn't have to be a struggle. I don't really have any struggles other than the fact that I'm a female in STEM, which take that as you do, but like, I'm not necessarily like a minority background. I'm not going through all of these really hard, big obstacles to get to grad school, but I am still unique. And my uniqueness can come in the form of my outreach that I've done, the fact that I sew, the way that I frame the things that I did, that's what makes me unique. So even if you don't feel like you're special or have like a struggle or anything to talk about, don't. Find something else to talk, to talk about, even if it's not science-y. Um, also when it comes to the GRFP, uh, this is one of the few proposals that I've done where they don't actually request a true CV, um, meaning they're not going to see all of your accomplishments literally listed out. So you have to go out of your way to list them out. I say that because I accidentally left out one of the publications that I'm on because I didn't really know how to weave it into my story. Um, I'm not saying that probably would have been the thing that would have like gotten me the GRFP, but I'm saying you have to be very explicit in the things that you mention. I wasn't able to mention all of the different um, like organizations I'm part of because I couldn't figure out a way to really weave it into my story. Um, the other thing to note about the GRFP is you do have to have these three sections, which are broader impact, intellectual merit, and future goals. I don't know, I can't remember if they specifically ask you to have future goals in there, but that's something you should definitely have in there. Um, and then another thing that's important to think about is to tie your personal statement somehow back to your research statement. And I did that in the form of talking about the multi-species biofilm, specifically the fact that I researched them briefly in my one of my first research labs in the SBML, and then I brought it back into my research currently, and I'm going to be researching it more with the funding that I'm asking for. So I'm like, drawing this line and creating this story about the research that I'm wanting them to fund and why they should fund me for it. One of the reasons why, because I've kind of done it in the past and therefore I'm probably gonna be more successful. Research can be quite incremental. That's a future thing. That's one of the negative things that I got about the research proposal part. But if you're able to prove the fact that you are well suited and ready for this position and ready for this research, you're more likely to get positive feedback. Um, in regards to the feedback that I did get on my personal statement, it was all generally positive. They were like, this is a really impressive, um, really impressive like publication presentation record for someone in their second year of grad school and uh, really impressive outreach activities, very clearly interested in outreach with a career in outreach probably coming up down the pike. Uh, the one negative feedback bit of feedback that I got on my personal statement was that I didn't include um, metrics to see how successful the outreach was that I have done. Um, and that's because I haven't done metrics because if you do metrics, you have to go through an institutional review board, which is a headache and it stops a lot of stuff from happening. Um, so I was just kind of like, I'm gonna do my outreach. I wasn't allowed to like give a poll like what could I have improved on or anything like that like you cannot do that without an IRB approval um, so I didn't go through that because I wanted to be able to get my outreach um, so that's kind of like the basic tips that I have make it a story if you can include like a metaphor or something like that um, talk about what's unique about you you don't have to like blatantly say like, I sew and therefore I'm unique, but like talk about what is unique about you because there is something. And if you think there isn't, you're wrong, figure it out. <laughs> and also uh, brag, like you have to brag. That's what it's about. The whole point of the personal statement is to tell them about who you are and why you're the shit and why they should select you for all this money. Um, and then also try to tie in why you are already in the best position to receive this money. Like talk about why you can be successful with the money, which in my case was like, I've been doing this research for X amount of years. I'm at this institution, which is meant for biofilm research kind of idea. So like stuff like that. Um, I think that is all I really have specifically about the personal statement. Uh, stay tuned. I definitely want to do one about the research statement because that's where I got most of my feedback on. And I know that's a little bit trickier because my research statement is very specific to my dissertation. Um, but 
I still want to do that as well as just talking about like the GRFP and proposals in general and like my thoughts on them, tips, stuff like that. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.